you want to be free from fear of every human being, of every unit in nature. Right? You want to be assured of every human being, every unit in nature. Now this has become very important for you. Because of this, you know, activity of imaging, right? Because of this, you know, basic characteristic of, you know, will to live with continuous happiness. So for us, this has become important. Right? The will to live is already there. Will to live with continuous happiness has become very prominent for us. Right? This is not prominent for anyone. <coughs> As long as it is able to fulfill the need of the will to live, right? It is comfortable with it. That was the first point we made, right? The very first in the first session, right? We said if there is a lack of physical facility, the animal becomes uncomfortable, right? But if it gets enough physical facility, it is comfortable. <coughs> with human being, if you look at it. The human beings become <coughs> uncomfortable and unhappy if there is lack of physical facility. But if you get physical facility, right, you almost forget about it. <coughs> you start thinking in terms of other things, right? which concerns the issue of right understanding and right feeling, which concerns the issue of happiness. And I was mentioning that if the <coughs> happiness is not there, you may even decide to kill your body, right? So commit suicide. The animals won't commit suicide. <laughs> <laughs> it may die of hunger if it is not able to get enough food. It might die of hunger, but not commit suicide. So you cannot uh, conduct a workshop like this <laughs> because that basic need for right understanding is not there, right? They don't feel depressed, right? They don't commit suicide, right? Because all that part is not there, you know, prominent in us, in them. Guruji, uh, the animal's uh, competence, lack of competence, uh, they have eye also, but the lack of competence uh, to pursue continuous happiness, is, is it because of the problem with the eye or is it the problem of the body? I was wondering that a human being who has been able to get the right understanding during his body, and then later on when this eye gets transmitted to an animal, will that uh, eye be able to get the right understanding in the animal body? You see, why will it get transmitted to an you know, association with an animal body? <coughs> if it has the right understanding and right feeling, okay, then it can see that, you know, it is always good to be with the human body. <laughs> <coughs> because the human body is far more sophisticated as compared to the animal body. Mm -hmm. So if I have the right understanding and right feeling, I would prefer to continue you know, with the human body. You know. On the other hand, if you think that by selecting and testing, you can ensure continuity of happiness, right? and that is what you are doing as human being, then you might feel that <coughs> selecting and testing can be done better in animal body. <laughs> so you may choose to associate yourself with animal body. <laughs> because after all, it is out, out of your choice that you are doing. And you can see that because the animals and the birds are restricted to this activity of selecting and testing and this will to live in eye. Majority of their activity is related to the eye, related to this you know, body. So they select and test.
to suit the nurturing of the body, protection of the body. Right? So that is why they are restricted and therefore they are quite in order. For you the problem is that you are no more restricted just to the body. Okay? This will to live. For you this imaging has become something very important. This continuous happiness has become something important. Right? Therefore, you are not able to manage yourself only with, you know, ensuring this directing and testing in relation to the health of the body. You start eating, right, to get the test and ensure continuity of happiness. Therefore, you tend to overeat, unlike animals, right? So, you are creating problem for yourself, you know, for your body. That does not happen with the animals. So, because you have moved up in the, you know, in terms of your activity and you have not moved enough <coughs> up, you know, that is, this right understanding part is not there. Okay. <coughs> so, there is some possibility which we will talk about later, right? This possibility of right understanding, right, has not been fulfilled. So, you are stuck half between. So, you are neither like animal, nor like human. <laughs> <laughs> And that is the meaning of human being living with animal consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, when you explain the creating problem, uh, little elaborate on the selecting. What's the meaning of selecting here? When yeah. you say testing, I am like uh, I uh, you take this example. You have some taste of a rasgulla. Right? So, depending on that test that you have, you decide to eat a rasgulla. Right? This is called selecting. Selecting to eat a rasgulla. After you have done this selection, then you will chase that rasgulla. When you eat that rasgulla and that comes in contact with your tongue, you will taste that. So, this selecting for testing and testing after the selecting is going on. If you look at the animal, the animal is largely related, you know, kind of engaged with this. So, the cow will eat the grass, okay. but it will not eat the meat, because it is not suitable for its body. Okay. The tiger will eat the meat and will not eat the grass. So this selecting and testing. <laughs> so this selecting and testing is taking place okay, in the cell of the animal. If you look at the human being, this selecting and testing is not decided on the basis of the body. Right? You might start deciding it on the basis of your imaging. <coughs> so you can do many things you know, which are not suitable for the body. I mean, a lot of it we have done. Like these days, you know, this small, this thing called Vikre. This is a packed food, you know, kurkure. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you burn that kurkure with a majestic, see, you would realize what it consists of. It contains plastic. Burn it, and at the end, some plastic will be left. <laughs> We come put here. I lost one permanent. Can't do it. Five hundred. Now very interesting. Anyway, if you don't know what it is, you better. 
Many things, you know, you keep on combining, you know, this with that, you know, fry it, you know, deep fry it, you know, all that. You do all that, okay? And in the process, it might lose the digestibility. So it may not be digestible for you. But still, you know, out of the taste, you can eat. And after some time, it becomes a liability and all that. You can all do that, you know, with your imagining thing, you know, with your imagination and create problem for yourself and for others also. And that's what we are doing, isn't it? In fact, you know, there is a documentary called Food Incorporated. If you see that sometime, in fact, it will not be possible for you to see through the whole movie. It's almost a horrible movie. I call it horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> this describes about how the food is prepared, you know, prepared in America by this corporate, you know, corporate world. It appears that some 3,000 or more than that, you know, number of food items are prepared. Okay, but the only content for all these three to 5,000 items of food is either maize or meat. And if you look at the way the image is grown and the way the image is, you know, the meat is, you know, kind of, uh, now manufactured, it's not even grown. <laughs> <laughs> then you can just see, you know, how, uh, what human being can do here. It is terrible. And uh, one of the major content, you know, when she was telling me that, one of the major content of, you know, the sweet, test that you get in the food is fructose which is taken out of the maize and which is simply not di digestible for human beings. Okay. Now you are eating something which is not digestible, but you are eating it because it is giving you taste. So because it is not getting digested in your body, therefore it is accumulating in the body. Therefore you are suffering from overweight, right? This obesity. All kind of things you can do. Not only for yourself, but it doesn't have for the animals also. You must have heard of this thing called mad, mad cow disease. Some three lakh cows had to be shot dead in England, okay? Because they all got mad. They have got a disease called mad cow disease. So they go mad. If they bite the other cow, the other cow will also go mad. But you know what is the origin of it? The origin of it is that lot of this butchering, you know, house, you know, where they kill this and you know, cows and convert them into meat and pack them in the tin and pack, you know, supply. They thought that lot of this, you know, intestine, the stomach of the cow, is not used as meat, is not sold as meat, right? So it is going wastage. Why not, you know, convert it into the food for the cows? But the cows won't eat because that's not their food. <coughs> so what they did, they, you know, chopped it into a very small you know, pieces, boiled it, and finally converted it into something which the cows could not make that it is meat, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it was fed to the cows. Okay. After eating that, the cows started getting mad. <laughs> and that's the root of this mad cow disease. And it became so troublesome that finally they had to kill all those cows which they had fed this. And they were biting other cows, they were also becoming mad. So at one time, all three lakhs cow, you know, cows had to be shot dead. And if even we eat the, the meat of the cow, then you can understand what will happen. <laughs> <laughs> or the human being is already mad.
This is all done in the name of development. <coughs> Increasing the efficiency. So <coughs> 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 you can see, <coughs> these are the basic <coughs> observation about these units in nature, which can be categorized in these four different orders. Right? The physical order, where units like soil, water, metal. <coughs> the pranic order, where units like trees and plants. Then the animal order, where things like animals and birds. And the human order, you know, which consists of only one type of unit, that is human being. So their activity can be identified as composition, decomposition, decomposition, decomposition plus respiration, pranic order. In the body, the same <coughs> animal and of <coughs> human being. At the level of cell, you will have activity of selecting and testing in eye. At the level of human being, the self will have activity of imaging, okay, analyzing, <coughs> selecting and testing. And there is a possibility of this activity of realization and understanding, which we have till now not put it there, <coughs> but we can put it. <coughs> so, this difference in these four orders can be seen at the level of activity. It can also be seen at the level of this characteristics. So, the physical order is characterized by existence in a definite order. The, the pranic order is characterized by existence plus growth. The animal order is characterized by at the level of body, it is the same as pranic order. At the level of eye, the animal has will to live. The human being has will to live with continuous happiness. So this you can observe. Yeah, uh, we'll have this question first and then come to your question. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So, uh, in case of these four orders, under the human order, uh, and under activity we have something called as decomposition. So, one closed, uh, closed ended question, sir. Is this, this uh, decomposition common to all, sir? Common to all human beings? <coughs> common to all human body. Human body, sir. Yes. Yeah. So, if so yes. Every human body tend to decompose. If yes, uh, I wonder, I think uh, most of us present here in this hall, uh, in this room, might have experienced that some great gurus and great lamas, even after so many years of their, uh, their death, uh, their bodies are still as usual. It may, it may be decomposed in, in the air, but not in soil or something like a fire or so on. So. Even without any smell, they're still as same as alive, apart from the movement and the speech. So, what is your say on this? Yeah, yeah. See, see. When you convert it to a physical order, okay, once it is dead, means it is no more a pranic order, right? It has been converted into a physical order. When it is converted into a physical order, then, you know, it, the rule that will apply is that of the physical order. And what is that rule? Unless the appropriate conditions are available for decomposition, it will not decompose. A whole lot of effort has been made traditionally, you know, like this Egypt. They, you know, kind of uh, used to prepare a paste kind of thing, you know, powder kind of thing. And if you put a layer of this on the body, then it, you know, creates enough isolation. <coughs> with the environment, okay? and it will not decompose. Now this is what you are doing, when you are painting a piece of iron, what are you doing? You are creating a coating over this piece of iron, such that this iron is no more coming in direct contact with the air and the humidity, the water. 
therefore it will not rust. Right? So that is the phenomena of composition and decomposition, which calls for some, you know, conditional conditions. So if you avoid <coughs> that condition, then the so decomposition will stop. This without any application of chemicals or other Then you will have to find out. I will leave it for you to find out. <laughs> <laughs> then you can find out why it is not decomposing. You see, what is happening, we always tend to, you know, try, you know, giving some supernatural interpretation to things. And if you look at this, you will realize what is natural can be understood. What is understood seems to be natural. If you don't understand it, it seems unnatural or supernatural. That is the whole trouble. That if I don't understand something, it sounds something you know, supernatural to me. If I understand it, it is natural. The issue of magic or the secret or things like that, you know, it all has to do with the fact that I am not able to understand it. So if I am not able to understand it, it will go supernatural. <laughs> if I am able to understand it, it will be natural. For example, so many things we have been trying to understand last, you know, five, six days. <coughs> the moment I understand it, it becomes very natural for me. When I don't understand, it sounds very secret. <laughs> And when I can understand it, I can live with it, okay, in a manner which is natural. There was a question here. Yeah, think my, question, my question is, if you put the category sentient being, which of these four categories should I mean, in rather, three of them will go. Sentient, sentient beings. We usually call it and in literature also become a sentient being. Yeah, so if you take the sentient being, you know, the basic characteristic of it would be the consciousness or growth. That you have to differentiate. Consciousness. If it is consciousness, then these two will qualify. If it is just growth, then these three will qualify. And traditionally they have been confusing between them, right? So that has to be sorted out. Okay? What is your criterion of deciding what is sentient, what is not sentient? If it is this consciousness, which is expressed in terms of knowing and assuming. So if this knowing and assuming is the criterion for calling it sentient, then the self right, has this quality of knowing and assuming. Therefore, these animals and human beings will qualify under that. Do animals assume? Do animals assume? One of the major assumptions is that they assume themselves to be the body. <laughs> <laughs> and therefore, and thereafter, they make all their selection and testing on the basis of <laughs> that body. So for a cow, for example, would identify itself, you know, self of the cow, will identify itself to be the body of the cow. And therefore all its selecting and testing okay. will be done on the basis of what is appropriate for the body of the cow. Okay. So yes, that is one major assumption. And you can also see that these animals, when you come, when they come in contact with human beings, Right? This assumption becomes more apparent. Right? For example, a dog <coughs> coming in contact with human being, okay, it starts behaving with, you know, uncertain conduct, like human being. Right? <laughs> for example, if the dog, you know, if you keep feeding the dog, you know, keep caring for it, after some time, it assumes you to be something other than the other human being. Right? 
So even if you hit the dog, it will not bite, right? It will shake. <laughs> On the other hand, the other person is just passing by and it might bite, right? <laughs> so this change in his conduct <laughs> is because of this change in the assumption, right? Which has taken place because of being in contact with you. <laughs> now you got uh, clarity in my mind. I was uh, watching a National Geographic channel where some birds, they make them like <coughs> artificial beak and feed the birds. So I think they assume that uh, actually not the birds, mother bird, but the artificial beings. <laughs> Human beings feeding that. <coughs> yeah. Uh, <coughs> I didn't want to go against the question raised by when they over there regarding the composition. Nor I, do, uh, I want to disagree with those great things. Then we can run it. <laughs> <laughs> the point here, or the view I want to share here is the nature of decomposition is there. I do agree with the statement that uh, you made over there. Uh, with the reason that the process of decomposition is quite different. I should rather put it in this way. But the nature of decomposition is, is taking place. Even for those great saints I have seen, uh, their body neither stings after their death, which otherwise usually we experience after our death, the body starts stinging within a day or two. But uh, th that's not the case with those great saints. But the process of decomposition is there. I should rather say, because there is shrinking. The, uh, when they were alive, their body might be a little bit heavier, but after their death, it starts shrinking up sometime. Of course, there is no stinking, but the, the shrinking is taking place. That itself is a kind of decomposition. And after some time, then we might get blessings, and then after some time, we put those, that de dead body to its two <coughs> And after that, we, we don't know what happens then. I think the decomposition process is there. That natural, natural phenomenon is with every one of us. <coughs> because after putting it into a stupor, then we don't get a chance to see what happens after that. I <laughs> said, I will leave it for you to. <laughs> <laughs> I will also share with the, uh, the comments that made by the later person, the recent one. Yes, uh, I have also experienced that uh, it only slow down the decomposition, but finally it, uh, it is uh, decomposed. Uh, I'm just, uh, uh, I just wanted to share or inform the, uh, not the audience, the Guruji, that uh, how interesting it is to be in this order form. And then uh, from our learning that it's a uh, different way. It says that uh, how we uh, make this order is that there are six elements. We say that uh, consciousness element, space element is second, then water, soil, fire element, and air element. And then all these elements are within our bodies. With our body we have blood which represents the water element, then we have a flesh which represents the soil element, then we have the air inside which represents the air element, and also the space that we have inside, space element and air element. And then, the, and then if we look outside of our body, and all these elements are there, and there is an inter uh, uh, reaction. No, not a reaction. Uh, what do you say? Delwa. Delwa question. The relations, uh, relations between the outer elements and the, the inner elements, which is within our body. And then, if you go further inside your mind, then we have the uh, five poisons like anger, jealousy. Then five colors that we actually see outside, and then five wisdoms of, of, of Buddha. So all these are, uh, you know, because of the five wisdom Buddhas, when we uh, translate into the 
colors, then it becomes a color ray. And when you uh, put it into the, uh, the it, then it becomes a, like a five poisons. Then finally it comes down to these elements. And then similarly when dye also.